I will call to order the Monday, February 9th meeting of the Verona Common Council. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll have the roll call. Ms. Schofield, if you would, please. Alderperson Diaz? Here. Alderperson Doyle? Here. Alderperson Linder? Here. Alderperson McGilvery? Here. Alderperson Rieke? Here. Alderperson Steiner? Here. Alderperson Touche? Present. And Alderperson Years? Here. We have everyone here this evening. Thank you for that. So we also have a quorum, and we will proceed with the meeting. Next on the agenda is public comment. If there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak this evening, if you would please come to the podium. There should be a sign-up sheet there, and we would ask that you do sign in and also give your name and address if you wish to speak. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak this evening? Anyone from the public that wishes to speak? I'm not seeing it. If you would, sir. Okay. All right, we have uh, no public comment then this evening. Next order of business would be approval of minutes from the January 26th meeting of the council. What's your pleasure? Move approval. We have a motion by Mr. Years. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Rickey. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of the approval of minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried and the minutes are approved. Uh, under Mayor's business this evening, I have nothing to report, so we will move to the administrator's report. Mr. Burns, if you would, please. Yeah, thank you. I have a couple updates this evening. Uh, first, uh, there was a meeting that was held last Thursday uh, about the Danecom radio uh, s project. Uh, with the Danecom system, uh, Dane County had indicated that they are continuing to work on the enhancements to the Danecom system. And with this meeting, uh, the, the main purpose is that they wanted to notify uh, police, fire, EMS services, Dane County Cities and Villages, and Dane County Towns Association about the status of, of DaneCom um, as built, as well as the expanded system. And in the coming weeks, they're going to be asking for those various groups to weigh in on whether or not uh, the preference would be to turn on DaneCom as built this summer or to wait until the enhanced Danecom system features become available with some expanded coverage and expanded options, uh, which likely would not be ready until summer of 2016. Uh, the Dane County Cities and Villages Association uh, is working on putting together a, a conference call from our executive committee, and we'll be discussing um, that project, uh, the status of it, and providing some additional information to the membership um, coming up within the next couple weeks. Um, so I'll provide more information as it becomes available on the status of that project. Uh, for the city website, a uh, reminder that the, the city's new website uh, went live uh, toward the end of last year. Uh, we have at this time a new URL to direct people to the website. Uh, we have been able to obtain the veronawi.gov URL, and that is live as of today. So the city's current web address um, or former web address of, of ci.verona.wi.us uh, remains active and will continue to remain active. But in addition, people can use the simpler URL of veronawi.gov to access the city site. We're recruiting for a couple positions right now in the fire department, uh, the deputy fire chief recruitment, and also the fire science intern program, which is a new program for our department. Um, applications for those are available online, and the deadline for both um, positions is March 9th. And finally, a reminder that uh, the police department will be hosting an emergency government um, operations training for elected officials next Monday. Uh, the 16th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, that will be held in the EOC, uh, Emergency Operations Center, in the Police Department. And I know a few of you have indicated um, that you'll be present. I was just wondering if perhaps we could get a quick show of hands of how many people are planning to attend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Are there any questions for Mr. Burns this evening? I'm not seeing any. Thanks, Bill. Uh, next, we'll have the engineer's report. Mr. Gunlock, please. Thank you. Uh, the only thing I have to report this evening is uh, a week from Thursday the, uh, will be the bid opening for the uh, 2015 street program. Uh, that bid opening will be held at the Public Works Garage. Uh, the Director of Public Works will open those bids at that time. That's all I have this evening. 
Are there any questions? Are there any questions for Mr. Gunlock this evening? I don't see any. Thank you, Bob. Welcome. We will move on then to committee reports, and we will begin with the plan commission. Mr. Linder, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, agenda item 9A1, I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-15-001, approving an, an amendment to a conditional use permit to allow a group development at 1979 Milky Way. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Doyle. Mr. Linder, please. Uh, thank you. The proposed conditional use permit amendment will allow Epic Systems Corporation to construct five office buildings that will be known as Campus 5. The campus will contain approximately 500,000 square feet of office space and 1,600 offices. Construction of the campus will begin in 2015. The plan commission held the required public hearing on February 2nd, 2015 and voted 6-0 to recommend approval of the conditional use permit. You've heard the background questions, uh, Mr. Diaz? Uh, I just want to say I'll be abstaining from the vote. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lender? Uh, just a little follow-up, some discussion um, related to the fire entrance. There's actually three fire entrances and um, I don't know if that's clear on the maps. Um, and then the location of the walking path will um, be altered because of the, the new entrances, but it should be on the opposite side of the berm, um, which I think is an enhancement to the project. Those are a couple of things that came up during the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Other questions or comments? I've heard the background. Questions or comments uh, from the Planning Commission or from staff? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-15-001, approving an amendment to a conditional use permit to allow a group development at 1979 Milky Way. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Linder. Thank you. Uh, next item is agenda item 9A2. And I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-15-002 approving a conditional use permit to allow a group development at 103 Lincoln Street for the Verona Area Community Theater building. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yours. Mr. Linder. Um, the uh, proposed conditional use permit would allow for the construction of a 13,850 square foot rehearsal and performing arts facility located immediately north of the Military Ridge Trail. The proposed building will, would be the second building on this parcel as the city fire and EMS facility is also located on this parcel. Multiple buildings on one lot are classified as a group development which requires a conditional use permit. The plan commission held the required public hearing on February 2nd, 2015 and voted 6-0 to zero to recommend the approval of the conditional use permit. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Are there questions or comments, Mr. McGilbray? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Please let the record reflect that I will be abstaining and standing for voting on this item. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Questions or comments? If not, you've heard the motion in the second. The motion is to approve resolution R-15-002, approving a conditional use permit to allow for a group development at 103 Lincoln Street for the VACT building. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. <coughs> Motion carried. And we will let the minutes reflect that Mr. McGilvery abstained, and I didn't mention it after the last vote, but on the previous vote, we'll have the minutes reflect that Mr. Diaz abstained. Mr. Linder. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 9A3. I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-15-003 approving a precise implementation plan to allow for the construction of a 111 unit senior living complex located in lot 30 of the second addition to the Prairie Oaks subdivision um, and I guess with the condition that prior to the issuance of building permits the applicant shall either amend the general development plan or obtain a conditional use permit to allow a building height greater than 35 feet. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Ms. Rickey. Mr. Linder. Uh, the proposed precise implementation plan will allow for the construction of a 111 unit senior living complex and is the final step in the plan development process for the project. 
The project would consist of 54 independent living units, 43 assisted living units, and 14 memory care units. The applicant plans to start construction of the senior living complex in 2015. The project requires an amendment to the general development plan or a conditional use permit to allow for a building height of 37.5 feet. The zoning ordinance provides a maximum building height of 35 feet unless a conditional use permit is obtained or a zoning exemption is granted in the general development plan. The plan commission held the required public hearing on February 2nd, 2015 and voted 6-0 to zero to recommend the approval with the condition noted in the motion. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Are there questions or comments for plan commission or for the staff? Mr. Um, Mr. Steiner, please. Um, I made my comments at the planning commission meeting, but I just want to just briefly uh, recite them again. Uh, there are constituents, longtime residents in this area that continue to be worried about congestion. Traffic movement, young people in the area now mixing in with seniors is a great idea. But that playground is getting smaller and smaller due to the amount of traffic that's moving around it. Now we had some of the same discussion during the McKinsey apartment project and it worked out real well. They've been a good neighbor. People have realized, yes, it's working. Well, now we come in in the same general area and once again at their association meeting, they had some very strong concerns and, and traffic uh, on enterprise and, and coming down the cross country is already very slow in, in moving and it does move, but uh, people are very concerned and they are just worried. And uh, I promised them I would mention their concerns at this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Other questions or comments? Other questions or comments? Uh, just a brief comment that I'll make. Um, I know we talked a little bit at the Planning Commission about the, uh, the analysis and uh, whether there was a need for this type of, of uh, residential facility in Verona. And since last week, Monday, I've read a number of different articles, not only locally, but just nationwide about uh, how there is such a need for this. So as we've talked about in the past, I think we're really excited for this project and uh, looking forward to your approval. Other comments or questions? If not, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-15-003, approving a precise implementation plan to allow for the construction of a 111 unit senior living complex located on lot 30 of the second addition to the Prairie Oak subdivision. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Nay. That motion carries with Mr. Steiner voting no. Uh, Mr. Linder. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, next item is 9A4. And I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-15-004, approving the release of stormwater dedication with the following conditions. Uh, one is pursuant to Wisconsin statutes, including Wisconsin statute 236.293, the city of Rona hereby releases and waives the stormwater restrictions applicable to the portion of all lot two of the Prairie Crest, Press, excuse me, Prairie Crest Plat as modified by the CSM. And two, this resolution is conditioned upon city of Rona approval of the certified survey map provided by, prepared by the owner. We have a motion by Mr. Linder, is there a second? Second by Ms. Rickey, Mr. Linder. Thank you, the uh, proposed resolution will allow the city to release portions of a previously dedicated stormwater pond located on outlot two of the Prairie Crest Plat. The next item on the agenda is a certified survey map modifying lot lines of two lots located on the northeast corner of Locust and Meadowside Drive. Outlock two, outlock two of the Prairie Crest Crest Plat was dedicated to the city in 1989 for stormwater purposes. In order for the city to modify the lot lines of CSM, the city needs to release the stormwater dedication. I don't know if Mr. Sayer has anything to add to that one, maybe. Mr. Sayer, if you would, please. Yes, this resolution was not on the plan commission agenda, but it needs to be approved before the next item on the agenda if the city desires to actually 
release and modify a lot lines of this lot. Uh, by state statute, we have to acknowledge that this was previously dedicated to the city as for stormwater purposes. What this resolution is basically doing is saying that, yes, it was dedicated. Uh, we're authorizing the release of that dedication um, and that we can formally fully release it at the next item on the agenda. But this was uh, advised to, the, the city attorney advised us to have this item on the agenda before the next item, the CSM for this property. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. Questions or comments from Planning Commission or from staff? Mr. Touche? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Your mic, please. Sorry. Um, is, does, is, it a, is this a contingent upon the next item passing? Mr. Sayre? Yes. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-15-004 approving the release of stormwater dedication. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Linder. Thank you. Uh, next, I will make a motion to approve resolution R-15-005 approving a certified survey map to modify the lot lines of two lots located at the northeast corner of Locust and Meadowside Drive. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Yers. Mr. Linder. Thank you. The proposed certified survey map would modify lot lines for lands located at the northeast corner of Locust and Meadowside Drive. Lot 1 is owned by the Suna Heroes, and Outlot 1 is owned by the city and used for stormwater management. When a stormwater ditch was constructed, it was inadvertently constructed on part of the Suna Heroes property. The proposed certified survey map would modify the lot lines for both parcels to match the existing fence line dividing the parcels. On February 2nd, 2015, the Planning Commission voted 6-0 to zero to recommend approval of the certified survey map. You've heard the background. Are there questions for the Planning Commission or for city staff? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-15-005, approving a certified survey map to modify the lot lines of two lots located at the northeast corner of Locust and Meadowside Drive. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Linder. Thank you. Uh, next is agenda item 9A6. And for this, I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-15-006, approving an extraterritorial certified survey map to modify lot lines for property located at the southwest corner of Sunset Drive and County Highway PB in the town of Verona. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Touche. Mr. Linder, please. Oh, and uh, there is a, I forgot to add a condition to that. Um, the condition is that the certified survey map shall dedicate additional Sunset Drive right away along lot three to the public to match the existing right away dedication of the adjacent lots. Mr. Touche, is that acceptable? Yes. Okay. Thank You've you. heard the motion and a second. Questions, comments? Like me to go ahead, Mr. Make Hunter. a little explanation to this. The proposed extraterritorial certified survey map will modify the lot lines for property located at the southwest corner of Sunset Drive and County Highway PB in the town of Verona. The proposed certified survey map is located within the town of Verona, within the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction, and approximately one mile from the city limits. Section 14 37 of the Municipal Code regulates extraterritorial land divisions. In general, land divisions are limited in town and require a minimum lot size of 35 acres. However, five exceptions to the minimum lot size are provided within the ordinance, including land divisions or subdivisions by certified survey map that do not create additional building sites. The proposed certified survey map meets this exception as no new buildable lots are being created. On February 2, 2015, the Planning Commission voted 6-0 to zero to recommend the approval of the extraterritorial certified survey map with the condition noted in the motion. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Questions or comments? Questions or comments for staff or for Planning Commission members? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-15-006, approving an extraterritorial certified survey map to modify the lot lines for the property located at the southwest corner of Sunset Drive and County Trunk Highway PB in the town of Verona. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Linder. And next is agenda item 9A7. 
And I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 15-858, adopting a North Neighborhood Plan as an amendment to the City of Rona Comprehensive Plan. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Years. Mr. Linder. Um, I think this one I'll, I'll hand over to Adam. It's a little, little more to it, so he's going to take over. Okay. Mr. Sir. Thank you. So the North Neighborhood Plan is generally located north of the city, um, extending east to the city of Madison, north to County Highway PD, and west to uh, uh, Country View Road. Um, so the area contains approximately 600, 1,600 acres of land. It includes a mix of land uses. We have uh, residential land uses, commercial land uses, some multifamily. There's a future elementary school planned within this neighborhood. Uh, it extends all the way out to the land zone by Epic as well, so there'll be office uses. Um, there's two churches that will remain as well, too. So it includes a, a wide uh, variety of, of uses in it. Uh, the plan commission did review this uh, plan during the, the plan commission, last plan commission meeting, and held a required required public hearing. Items that they discussed included mass transit. Uh, there were some concerns, I believe, about having buses within uh, in the residential streets. Um, looking at future lot sizes of should the plan have potential lot sizes in the plan or not. Um, and also looking at the community separation buffer. Uh, per our agreement with the City of Madison, there is a, a, a buffer that is required that be 1,000 feet north, south, east, and west from the intersection of County Highway M and PD, uh, extending 1,000 feet in every direction. That would be 300 feet deep, and that's part of our, our, our agreement with Madison. And, and then also looking at the future use of the quarries in this area as well, too, because there are two active quarries in this, this planning area. Uh, the Planning Commission did hold a required public hearing and voted five to one to recommend the approval of the plan with, with two amendments to it. The first amendment was the following sentences for two sentences from page eight were removed and those sentences said, the city supports bus service within the North neighborhood as part of a larger regional bus system. Potential bus stop is planned within the central portion of the neighborhood. The second uh, amendment that was made was that there are two recommendations on page 25, the last two bullet points. Uh, they, those are also removed from the plan. Those bullet points stated uh, encourage a bus route, bus stop, and use of mass transit within the neighborhood. And the second one was encourage a bus connection between downtown Verona and the north neighborhood. So the, the plan commission met last Monday night. Um, this area or this plan, this planning area is part of a larger agreement that we have with the city of Madison. Specifically, uh, per our intergovernmental agreement, agreement, this is part of the five points planning area. And any type of plans or developments within this planning area have to be approved by both the city of Verona and the city of Madison. Um, so on January 26, so a few weeks ago, the Madison Plan Commission reviewed the plan that was uh, submitted to the Verona Plan Commission and voted to recommend approval of it to their Common Council. Um, the Madison Common Council was scheduled to take action on February 3rd, so the following day from our Plan Commission meeting, so last Tuesday. Um, Verona staff notified the, the Madison uh, planning staff of the, the two changes that were, were recommended by the Verona Plan Commission. Um, Madison staff had, had some concerns about those changes, and specifically they had concerns that the plain changes that were, were made were not consistent with what the, the, the Madison Plan Commission had reviewed. Um, you know, Verona staff, you know, what I contended to them was that these, these changes were minor. Um, the plan before those changes were made didn't require mass transit. The changes that were made did not prohibit it. Um, it never said it was required or prohibited. It was always uh, encouraged and it was never a requirement though or a pro prohibition of it. So my, my opinion to Madison was it was a minor change. Um, it wasn't substantive. It was a change that uh, didn't really change the, the complex of the plan itself. Ultimately, if mass transit were it ever to happen in this neighborhood, it's a decision five, 10 years from now when development happens and when that conversation is happening. Uh, but uh, Madison staff had concerns with that. They felt it wasn't consistent. So it did go to the Madison Council last uh, Tuesday night and they voted to refer this back to their plan commission for uh, at a future date uh, to be determined um, to kind of review the plan again and, and take a look at it. Uh, so I guess where we're at with obviously the Verona is tonight it's here for, for adoption. Um, ultimately we, we still have to go back to Madison and, and have this approved. Um, um, so I guess at this time I'm, I'm open to, to questions or any comments you have, but um, I guess what staff is looking for tonight is to, to have this adopted 
so we can keep this moving forward, take it back to Madison, um, and ultimately go forward with our ultimate USA application to, to keep the process on this, on this moving forward. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Prior to questions, uh, without objection, we do have an individual who spoke at the Planning Commission and desired to speak tonight and just missed the public comment. So without objection, uh, Mr. White, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When you say the late Mr. White, I kind of think you're talking about my dad, but that's okay. Uh, greetings. My name is Bill White. I'm an attorney, and as uh, Mr. Mayor and the members of the Planning Commission and the staff know, I practice law in a, in a suburb of Verona called Madison. And I've uh, been working with the Endress family for a number of years now. Uh, uh, Jerry and Linda and Nick are sitting back there. They um, occupy about 38 acres as a primary homestead in the southwest quadrant of uh, PD and M. Uh, and it's uh, basically, it's their homestead. It's uh, in agriculture most of the time. As we all know, the city from the north and the city from the south have kind of grown up around them. <clears throat> the north neighborhood plan uh, presents four different uh, problems or questions or issues for them, and I'd like to repeat those tonight. Uh, the first is of the 38 acres they own on their homestead, approximately 11 acres is going to be in green space, mandatory green space under the agreement with the City of Madison. In talking privately with City of Madison planning staff as well as with City of Verona planning staff, there's not a whole lot of support for the 11 acres, <clears throat> but yet there it is. And so um, they get to pick up the tab for uh, what uh, probably the City of Madison has um, required back in 1996. Secondly, the center line of uh, uh, the relocated uh, County Trunk Highway M and County Trunk Highway PD is not yet known. <clears throat> um, the suspicion is that uh, it'll move uh, into their property a little more simply because uh, nobody wants to mess around with the University Ridge Golf Course and take any of their property. So therefore, more of the Endress property will be uh, taken uh, pursuant to uh, the redevelopment plan uh, envisioned by the <coughs> North Neighborhood Plan. Uh, thirdly, there's a, 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 a bike path and sidewalk called to be uh, created here. Uh, we don't know anything about whether that's going to be a cost to us, whether it's going to be on public land or private land, who will maintain it, who's going to shovel the thing, uh, what are the details. Uh, none of those facts are known to the family. Uh, and finally, uh, we found out that there is going to be an application fee uh, to include property within the regional, uh, the um, urban service area expansion. Um, how that gets assessed to them, uh, they obviously are not terribly interested in paying more money to be where they are, although they want to be good neighbors and cooperate uh, with the city of Verona and include their land in the urban service area expansion. Um, I did bring these items up a week ago at the Planning Commission. Uh, Adam was kind enough to, to get back to me, and if I can summarize, who knows? No answers to any of them. Uh, and so these uh, continue to be uh, nagging problems for a family that's lived there for 30 years and has seen uh, the evolution of the uh, urban, of the, uh, excuse me, the rural life become urban. And uh, uh, we would ask, and we asked at the Plan Commission that this matter be postponed until we could figure these, uh, these items out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. With that, we will uh, open up for questions. Ms. Doyle, you had your hand up first. Um, one question that I had was about taking out the portion about mass transit and again I understand that the language is just whether the city supports it or not but were there any items aside from safety that were brought up at the Planning Commission for taking that out or Mr. Sarah I, I can answer that question I guess uh, if, if all the person Linder and the mayor would like to jump in if I miss anything I, I think the concerns raised was I think in general uh, there was a, wasn't a desire to see buses on, on residential streets. I think I heard that comment. I think I also heard the comment of uh, people generally in the city don't support it. That was one of the comments made as well too. Um, I just think in, in, in generally speaking, there wasn't any interest to have that in the plan. Um, it was discussed previously in an October plan commission meeting as well too. Um, and then ultimately last Monday, the change was made as well. So I, I think those are the main points if you if anyone else wants to, I guess, add anything to that. That pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Mr. Burns, please. 
I, I just wanted to add, I, I would agree with Mr. Sayer's comments. Um, I, I think there was some question about um, the meaning of some of the wording in the plan. Um, one of the, the items that was removed is the sentence saying the city supports bus service within the North Neighborhood Plan as part of our larger regional bus service. And I think there was some question of within the North Neighborhood meant within actual subdivisions or neighborhoods or within the North Plan area. Um, there was some discussion and at least um, some support from members of the Plan Commission for the idea that there may be um, at a point in the future where it makes sense to have mass transit servicing some of the major thoroughfares in this area, perhaps um, PD servicing um, routes that would, would go toward Epic from the north, um, perhaps even servicing the commercial areas. Um, but, but the idea of buses within residential neighborhoods was a concern for some of the members. For follow up, Ms. Dow? Yeah, just to follow up, and, and what I've heard from residents, and I don't know if this is uh, was plan commissioner speaking of their interactions with residents or just the sense that they had gotten, but I've um, heard a lot of people say that they would like to see more bus services, especially for people who, you know, don't always have car for transportation or for younger travelers that can't drive yet. It is nice to have be moving toward mass transit so that they can get around. Um, and not great segue here, but do we, with not having any answers to these questions um, that were brought up during comments, is there any way of going about that or how are we gonna handle that going forward? Mr. Sayre, do you wanna to respond to the, the questions? Please? Sure, so uh, the first one was regarding the 11 acres of green space. Um, that's something that City of Verona staff has continually, we don't like the buffer, to be honest. I think we can accomplish it accomplish the intent of it which is community separation through architecture through landscaping through street design through signage through a variety of different things instead of using 11 acres um, so our, our position has been that we don't we don't like the buffer we like to see it go away uh, the reality is that we currently have an agreement with Madison that says that it, it needs to be in place um, I think without having it in the plan right now uh, we're gonna struggle even more to have this approved by Madison because it's not consistent with our current agreement. I will stay, say that in the, in, the, in the plan itself, we do have language in there that states that if the existing agreement is amended, the language within the revised agreement shall supersede the requirements of this plan. So the intent is that uh, hopefully if and when we, we, we change that agreement that, that, that it goes away. Uh, that'd be my recommendation. Uh, but as, as long as we have a current agreement, I, I don't see Madison approving this I, I just it's not consistent with the current agreement and that's that's you know when, when we first met with Madison staff I believe back in October um, it wasn't in there and and one of the comments came from them of well it's difficult to have take this forward to the Madison Council and Planning Commission when we have an agreement in place and it's not consistent with the agreement you, you can't just ignore the fact that we have an agreement now like it or not that agreement stands today as it is so um, we hope to have that resolved as part of the larger intergovernmental agreement and the conversations we've been having in Madison. Uh, those are ongoing, um, but that's one of the items that we, we continue to discuss with them. So that's, that's why it's still in there, but I, I, I would state that my position is, I think Verona staff's position is, remains that we can accomplish this in a, a better way. Uh, regarding the road design of County Highway MMPD, uh, that's, a, that's a regional project that's being coordinated by a variety of, of entities. Um, you know, I think it's 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 not obviously it's taken longer than it was initially supposed to. Um, it may be taking even longer now as we keep going forward with it. Um, I, I you know I don't know when we're going to have that right away flat done. And the question I guess the council ultimately is, if you want to wait and delay, you know that's that's ultimately your decision. But when we delay and wait, ultimately that pushes back the USA application and it, it, it triggers a lot of things as well too. The intent of getting this adopted, the intent of going forward with the urban service area amendment is to kind of keep it going so when services are available to the site that this area is ready to go because we're running out of single family lots, we're running out of uh, land for residential. And I guess from my perspective, I'd hate to see anything be held up uh, because of just timing and whatnot. I guess that's, that's the reason why staff is trying to you know, get this done. I know there's a lot of questions out there with the road that are unanswered, but it's a it's a massive project. It's a huge project. Um, regarding the bike paths and sidewalk, Mr. Mr. Oh, before you go on, I think Mr. Yours had a question specific to that prior issue. I just have a real quick question. So, if we want, if we go go ahead and approve this tonight, if we want to amend what we approve tonight, does it have to go back to the Madison Council and Madison Planning Commission, Mr. Sir? As long as that agreement is in place, it would. 
specific to this. Okay, Mr. Diaz. Um, how long is the, to, to clarify for people, how long is the agreement in place? The agreement expires on July 22nd of 2016, uh, per the agreement that it's automatically renewed unless either party notifies the other party one year in advance of the intentions not to renew. So this would be valid until July of 2016. Um, if Madison or the city of Rona decide to give notice, we'd have to give notice by, by July of this year. Okay, Mr. Sir, why don't you continue with those other points then? Okay. Uh, the, the bike path and sidewalk, um, you know, regarding the, the maintenance and how it's gonna be constructed, um, I do wanna speak with the public works director, Ron Reeder. He is on vacation until next Monday. That's a conversation I'll have with him when we get back. Um, I know he's, I, I believe he's had some conversations with the Andrews about that as well too. So um, I, I think we can take a look at that and see if there's any language we can put into place on that one. But I, I don't wanna, in the email I, to, to, to Bill White, I didn't wanna commit to anything partially because I wanna speak with Ron before we, we have that conversation. Regarding the USA fees, uh, beginning late last year, the uh, Capital Regional Planning Commission, CARPC, began requiring fees for all urban service area applications. Um, so it's a relatively new process. So any application going forward has to pay a fee based upon the acreage of the urban service area amendment request. Um, that fee is, is based upon a, a formula that's, a, that's available on their website. But um, the city did budget approximately Fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars for that, in, in, in the planning budget to to cover those fees. Half of that fee is due at the time of application. The other half of that fee is due at the time of connection. Um, so we've looked at possibly, if, if need be, the city would pay that that fee initially. That's why we budgeted the money. Um, I, I think from a policy perspective, I don't think we've had that conversation with the finance committee or the council yet of how we want to handle that. Is you know, does the city want to? basically front the cost on that or do we, do we want to ask developers to pay for that and how that's going to be handled is a is a conversation that we we still have to have with with ultimately the council here of what of how you want want us to handle that as well um i, I think until we get this adopted i i haven't we haven't brought that conversation forward yet because there hasn't been a need to um, but ultimately when this is adopted that's gonna be one of the first conversations we have at with the council and the finance committee of how should we be handling those um so I, I think hopefully, you know, when the plan is done and we're ready to submit that, obviously we have to have those conversations with the council initially, and then with the landowners as well too, of whose land we're adding to the urban service area. So that's a question that will hopefully be resolved this year. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Mr. Linder, please. No, thank you. I just wanted to follow up a little bit about the plan commission meeting. It was a five to one vote. Um, the one negative did not want to take the language out for the mass transit. Um, I, for myself, it seemed like the language was a little bit redundant in spots, a little too specific in spots. Um, it still says the city believes that a north existing or a, a north south bus route is appropriate in County Highway M. It's not removing busing, it's just maybe clarifying a little bit and not, some of these were saying in the neighborhood and I guess some of us in the commission felt it was like city uh, residential streets like Mr. Sayer said. Um, as far as the buffer goes, one of the guys, one of the people on the plan commission liked the buffer. Some didn't, mainly for the reason that Madison already has a buffer with the golf course, and so they're not giving anything up for their buffer where we're giving up 11 acres for our buffer. Felt that was a little bit unfair, and they would like to see that. And then, and then finally, I think Mr. Sayer touched on it. This process here, if it's approved by us and approved by Madison, then it goes to the urban, uh, urban service area uh, application. So that's, that's a timely process. And, uh, you know, there's times to, um, there's to weed some of this stuff out, but it's just to get the ball rolling, and that's the next step. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Other questions, comments? Mr. Steiner? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, there's residents that are very concerned about this development uh, from the city point of view, and most of the residents that are concerned are those that have been residents for a very long time. They have been watching dump truck after dump truck bring in fill into this area and dumping it uh, year after year after year for, in, in some cases, they said 12 to 15 years. And they also, at the same time, have been watching that intersection grow in traffic density. And they are very concerned about uh, quite a few things, but the one that really surfaced was how is the city planning to remove the water from this development 
and at what cost? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Mr. McGilvery? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just going to get real blunt about this. I think the 11 acres is absolutely ridiculous. If you look about, if you look at what's already out there, we're across from a, a substation and we're insulating 11 acres of property that I, I don't know how the Enders would like to develop it, but the fact that we would be supportive of a plan that is dictating 11 acres of open space across from a, a power station seems <coughs> crazy on its face, number one. Number two, I'm sure the city of Madison has amended agreements in the past in order to allow their development where they would like. And in this case, if you're telling me that staff doesn't support necessarily having the 11 acre bu buffer, I can't find it within me to support putting it down on a plan and hoping we can amend that plan under a body that is obviously not willing to amend it when it should be amended to begin with. So I, for me, I, as much as I want to see the North neighborhood plan move forward, because I recognize we need to get things rolling in that front, it, I think it's wishful thinking. We're lying to ourselves that <laughs> if we're going to say yes to this 11 acre buffer and then think we're somehow going to under overturn that at a later date. Mr. Taylor, do you, I mean, honestly, how do you think that will roll? Mr. Sarah? Yeah, I think, I think ultimately it ties into that agreement that we have, um, and how that can be amended. Um, you know, I, I think obviously that that's where it is, is coming from. I, I think generally their, their staff is supportive of taking a, a, a look at that buffer. I think ultimately we could probably have some resolution in the future on that, but I mean, it's, you know, the reality from their standpoint is from the staff standpoint, like I said, is that they've taken the position that we have an existing agreement, the language in the agreement, whatever we do in this area has to be consistent. They, they've argued that obviously they've enforced that buffer with Meritor, the clinic up there with that landscaping berm and whatnot as well too. So, um, I, you know, I, I don't. I don't know if their staff is in a position to do that. I know when I went to their plan commission, um, there was mixed support for the buffer. That was the impression I got from them. There were some saying they didn't like it. There were others saying that, you know, maybe we should extend it even further down the road. Um, but one of the questions came up as well too: is what is the economic impact, obviously, of, of this on on properties as well too? So, you know, I, I don't. I don't know where they're. Plan Commission and Council stands on the issue. To be perfectly honest, I think I think their staff is coming from the position of we have an agreement in place. You know, they're going to be hard pressed to recommend for a plan from a staff level uh, that is not consistent with that agreement. So, but regarding how it's going to be amended, I think it's a larger conversation of part of the agreement itself. Mr. Burns and then Mr. McElroy. Yeah, just uh, related to the item on, on the buffer, part of the reason for the, the language in the plan about if there's an amendment to that intergovernmental agreement um, that it would automatically supersede was to avoid the need to have to bring this plan back through the process, both in the city of Verona and city of Madison for amendment, um, that if that intergovernmental agreement is modified or would be terminated, um, that the plan would automatically be updated uh, with whatever is in that agreement or the lack of the agreement to supersede the language in the plan. Um, I, I think staff is in agreement. Uh, we do not support the buffer as is. We feel there are alternatives to that. We've had discussions with City of Madison staff. Um, however, if the alternative is to wait until the, the current agreement um, expires, we're waiting until July of, of 2016. So we were looking at, is there a way to include language in the plan that would, would allow for the change to be made once that intergovernmental agreement is uh, amended or terminated without having to delay this process until July of 2016 and delay the start of an urban service area application <coughs> until July of 2016. Mr. McIlroy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My understanding was that either municipality would have to notify the other if they were not going to follow through with this particular agreement within one year. So with, before July of this year, we would have to notify. By notifying, are we saying, in effect, that we will not be honoring this agreement? Mr. S Mr. Uh, Burns, please. I, I would say that if the city chooses to give notice um, to terminate the agreement, there would still be the possibility of discussing an alternative agreement prior to the expiration <coughs> of the current agreement. But I think that by giving notice, we would be indicating that we don't want to follow the agreement 
um, as is. In, in, in discussions that are ongoing with City of Madison, we, we've stated that as the position, that the City of Verona wants yeah. to see changes to that agreement, yes, and that's part of our current negotiations. Mr. McIlbray? So, and where are we at right now with the development of this other agreement? Because to me, it just seems a little, it seems wrong to be working in this direction with the full intent, that, at least from my point of view, that I do not support the agreement that was developed 20 years ago before there was any kind of development out in that area. And now we're being held to this agreement that, as far as I can tell from previous conversations by this council, we are no longer in support of either. And yet we're going to put down on paper that we are basically, by, by doing this, we are saying we support it. I know you've got language in there, but you're, when things are on paper, it's hard to undo. Mr. Burns? Uh, yeah, to ask, answer the question about the, the status of the ag agreement, uh, we've had several meetings with City of Madison. Um, at the last meeting between Verona staff and Madison staff, uh, we had put a proposal on the table, which includes addressing the buffer area. We're waiting for a response for the City of Madison at this point, and uh, we have a, a meeting scheduled uh, for Mayor Hokemer to meet with Mayor Soglin, and I believe that's the next step in the process. One more follow-up. Go ahead, <laughs> Mr. McGillray. And, and how much time are we willing to give them to respond to that? Is there some is there some magic date we're trying to hit with Carpsey in order to get the north neighborhood in front of them, Mr. Sayer? Mr. Sayer? No, there's, there's not a magic date. I, I know you're. I know we want to get it in front Correct. of them. Correct. There's, there's no magic date out there. I mean, it's one of those when the plan's adopted, we can complete the application, which is, you know, probably within a month. We can hopefully get that done by. Uh, obviously, Carpsey had some backlogs last year so I think the concern obviously was with their staffing levels of uh, we're, we're anticipating probably a six to twelve month approval process you know to get through CARPC assuming things go well um, mm -hmm. so I, I think that's that's kind of what we've been targeting in the back of our mind but obviously you know you take that out even further if you have to and you start counting the dates and then you start you know you're getting you're getting pretty close to that 2017 time <laughs> but there's no magic date by any means we're shooting for other questions or comments mr. Diaz thank you um, I just had a question about uh, Planning Commission taking the bus stuff out like do Adam do you anticipate any problems with with Madison because of that because I, I kind of look at the language and it seems I don't know it, it, it's not binding at all so in some ways I don't know I guess I wouldn't want it to cause problems I, 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 if time is of the essence if it's not it doesn't commit us to anything Mr. Sir, you know, I was I was kind of asked the same question at the Planning Commission. I said no, I don't think there'd be a problem with with Madison, but obviously I was wrong because it wasn't approved. Um, you know, my 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 argument is, and I'll stick with it, is that what was taken out didn't substantively change the plan itself. It never required buses. You know, cha changing it from not encouraging to not having it in there, and still language is in there regarding mass transit. The Planning Commission did not prohibit it. So and it never and never required it either. So you're always were in this middle middle ground as I would call it. I mean you might have been a little more one way or more the other way, but it never required it, never prohibited it. So I mean I that that's been my position of you know, we nothing's changed here. It's just we took a couple sentences out and a couple bullet points. Um will it be a problem? I, I asked their staff that in the comment I got back. I, I asked the flat out, I said, Will your plan commission approve this? And he said, I don't know, which you know that's that's an answer we all give because we just don't know until you get there but I would hope it would be because it wasn't a major change I mean they did talk about mass transit at that when I took it their plan commission they mentioned you know trying to encourage us looking at transit more before development happens and and, and looking at that as you know for, as, as part of all developments as well too but I I would sure hope it would be approved but I just don't know until it gets there either other questions or comments Ms. Rickey I would just encourage the council to leave the language in there since it isn't binding and um, because it's in the Sugar River watershed, I think that is going to be a sticking point possibly for Carp C and I just don't want that to be um, to be a hiccup down the road. So I think I don't see any harm in leaving the language in. Thank you. Mr. Yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say I'll be voting in favor of this tonight, but at the same time I, I do agree with Mr. McGilvery. You know, the, the 11 acres is, you know, there, there's no point to that. <clears throat> and I sincerely hope that the city can have nego negotiations with the city of Madison to get us out of that part of the agreement. 
or to change the boundary agreement completely. Um, however, I do have a few constituents who are invested in phase one of the property just to, to the very southern part, um, and they would love to see their old family farm have the opportunity to be developed and kind of get that off their plate as well. Um, so I will be voting in favor of this tonight. Mr. McIlbray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as it relates to the mass transit, I think to this point the city has had its mass transit subsidized. Um, I, th I would I would encourage this council not to bind future councils to spending money before figuring out how they would go about doing that. I mean, I think it it actually makes sense to me to, to have that language removed from this this neighborhood development. We haven't required it in other places, and I'm I'm not saying that it won't go there, but <coughs> I think for us to put it in the plan and say it is our intent to serve just that particular neighborhood would certainly create problems moving forward, and you have to realize that busing services get, have to get paid for in some way. We've been lucky to this point to have the busing services subsidized. I don't know that we'd be able to subsidize the entire city um, that way. So I, I would just uh, caution everybody, everybody to not be specific with language to a particular development. Thank you, Mr. McIlroy. Other questions or comments? Not seeing any other questions or comments, the motion before you is to approve ordinance number 15-858, adopting the North Neighborhood Plan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no? Aye. No. Will the no's please raise their hand? So we have five ayes, three no's, and the motion carries. Mr. Linder, anything else from the Planning Commission? Oh, that is all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on then to the Finance Committee. Mr. McIlbray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under item 9B1, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the monthly bills. We have a motion by Mr. McIlbray. Second. Seconded by Ms. Doyle. Mr. McIlbray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, payment of the monthly bills in this amount would be, this year would be excuse me, payment of the monthly bills would be $388,398,009. Uh, three of the larger items from this month's bills, first being to the South Central Library System for e-books, e-magazines, and, uh, and belonging to the buying pool. It's a yearly cost of $83,658.55. Second being to Utility Sales and Service Inc. for a VersaLift telelift 29N aerial lift, which is a replacement uh, part. That amount is $41,291. And lastly, to the Verona Area Chamber of Commerce for the fourth quarter room taxes, that is $28,943.85. We, we have a motion and a second. You've heard the major uh, financial expenditures. All those in favor of the approval of bills signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no? Yes. Motion carried. Mr. McIlbray? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Froley? Jim? Yeah. Can you hit the mic button, please? Okay. Mr. McIlbray? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under an I, um, item 9B2, <coughs> excuse me, I'll make a motion to approve an agreement with TDS Telecommunication Services for the fire and EMS facility with an initial infrastructure cost of $6,633 <coughs> and a monthly cost of $984.64 for a term of 60 months. We have a motion by Mr. McIlvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. Mr. McIlvery. Thank you. In the way of explanation um, from this, uh, from the uh, administrator's report, the city has received a proposal from TDS Telecom to provide phone service for the new fire and EMS service. The proposal would utilize a voiceover internet protocol system similar to what is used for the other city facilities. The initial cost of the system, as I said, is $6,633, uh, which would be borne by the construction um, budget that we have for the facility. Uh, the monthly cost is $984.64 per month, which reflects a volume discount of $400 per month. Four analog lines are included for fax machines, the fire alarm system, and the elevator. Uh, staff examined two other options for our phone and internet service. Option one, 
increasing the internet capacity with TDS to provide for phone and internet, internet service, and option two, using TDS for phone and charter for internet. Stack, staff recommended option two to the Finance Committee, and we uh, recommended unanimously to, that, uh, to approve that to you. Thank you, Mr. McGilvery. Are there questions or comments for the Finance Committee or for city staff? <coughs> questions, comments? I'm not seeing any. The motion before you is to approve an agreement with TDS for telecommunication services for the fire and EMS facility. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Is there anything else from the Finance Committee? That would be all. Thank you, Mr. McIlvery. We are moving under uh, to new business, agenda item number 10. And first we have uh, consideration of a claim filed by Clara Anderson for damage to a vehicle caused by a city snowplow. Mr. Burns, if you would provide the background, please. Yes, thank you. On January 26th of this year, a city plow truck scraped the side of a parked vehicle at the Senior Center parking lot while attempting to do a, a backing and turning maneuver. Uh, there was damage to the passenger side door of the vehicle, which is owned by a Ms. Clara Anderson. Ms. Anderson has filed a claim uh, with the city seeking payment for the cost to repair the damage uh, to the vehicle. The repair estimate is for $1,489.19. Uh, while the amount of this claim is within the city's insurance deductible, uh, the city did uh, ask for a recommendation from our insurance carrier, and it's their opinion that the city was negligent and that staff should be given authorization to settle cl the claim for the actual cost of the repair um, for a cost up to $3,000, uh, which would provide latitude in the event that any additional damage is <coughs> covered in the course of the repair. So staff would recommend um, authorization to settle the claim. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, you have heard the background, Mr. Touche. We have a motion by Mr. Touche. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Diaz. Any questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? If not, the motion before you is the uh, approval of a claim filed, the payment of a claim filed by Clara Anderson for damage, um, for damage to a vehicle caused by a city snowplow. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried and that claim has been approved. Next, we have discussion and possible action regarding a proposal from redevelopment resources to provide economic development services. Mr. Burns, if you would provide the background, please. Yes, included in the city's uh, 2015 budget is funding for economic development services. And following adoption of the budget, uh, the city did look at uh, some alternatives for, for economic development and had contacted uh, Kristen Fish and Pat Cannon of Redevelopment Resources. Uh, Mayor Hokemer, uh, Mr. Sayer, and I had, had met with Kristen and uh, Pat and talked to them about uh, the services that they could provide. And we've re received a proposal for redevelopment <coughs> resources, which includes two phases, um, an initial phase one, um, looking at a, a 90 to 120 day period roughly, and then a proposal for phase two, which potentially would allow for ongoing services. Uh, Ms. Fish and, and Mr. Cannon are here um, in attendance this evening and available for, to provide a brief presentation of the firm and the services that they would offer in their proposal and then be available for questions for the body this evening. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, with that, Ms. Fish, Mr. Cannon, if you would, please. And for the benefit of those here and those watching at home, if you could introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Kristen Fish, and I'm the principal and managing partner of Redevelopment Resources. I'm Pat Cannon, and I'm with Redevelopment Resources, and I have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> I've been smelling his halls here. <laughs> um, thank you. Redevelopment Resources is an economic development and con community development and redevelopment consulting firm. Um, we're based in Wausau until the end of February, then we're moving the corporate headquarters to Madison as I move myself and my family to Madison um, to the area. Um, we're about five years old as a firm. Um, we're made up of, of about approximately nine consultants who specialize in everything from planning, community and redevelopment, economic development, commercial real estate services. Um, we also have a finance, former finance director and a grant writer on our team. Um, we, we think it's a great combination of skill sets and we like to serve communities and private sector businesses, helping them achieve their development goals in the areas of um, primarily community and redevelopment, economic development and, and real estate from Greenfield to any kind of business attraction, business retention, um, creative financing, any kind of deal structure. 
Um, we work with municipalities and private sector clients primarily statewide right now. Um, we have a new contract in Omaha, Nebraska that we're excited about, but we've focused in the state so far. Um, we've had clients focusing with um, community development authority work in Stevens Point, Whitewater, Watertown, Wausau, and Marshfield. We've also served the communities of Merrill, Rothschild, Pulaski, McWanago, and West Bend, among others. So we have a wide variety of, of municipal and private sector experience. One thing that sets our firm apart, though, is that we don't just create plans. We want to make them implementable and make sure that the community has the tools to do the work or help them do the work from our perspective. Um, we've seen a lot of communities that have invited us in to just dust their plans off and help them implement the plans they already have. So one of the things we're most passionate about is seeing change in communities in a positive direction. Um, as far as the proposal is concerned, um, we talked to Administrator Burns and the Mayor and Adam about uh, the efforts that the community desires right now. And I think you're at a neat position in, in, in Verona where you can proactively pursue economic and community development as opposed to just being reactive and let it come to you. You can manage it more and be more diligent about it. Um, you have some tools in place already that need to be utilized more effectively. For example, the CDA, the Community Development Authority, could be utilized more effectively as a tool. So we're proposing a re-energizing boot camp, I called it in the proposal, but a way to get the Community Development Authority educated about the powers that it has as, a, as an entity and the tools that it has at its disposable, disposal, and then equip the, the CDA with a, an, a plan and a plan of action, a work plan, so that they can move forward as, as an effective CDA. Um, we also want to take an inventory of the assets that you have as a community and the tools you have available to you from a financial perspective, and then put a, an action plan together and then hopefully help you implement it. Do you have anything to add to that, Pat? At this point, I actually run two different community development authorities in Baraboo and Whitewater, and we do all the economic development through them. Um, it's an exciting time right now. Things are really changing from the recession, and I, I think what Christian said was now's the time to really sit back and, and work on this. And it's, it's really a community effort to, to put together the plan and implement it. It's not just one or two people. It takes everybody. And, and the way we've just structured this, this work is that we're not going to come in and tell you what the plan is and help and do it for you. We want to ha help you create the plan with your goals and your vision in place. Thank you. Uh, and we will open up for questions, but I wanted to make sure that, I, that we clarified. You had talked about, you know, informing the CDA as to what they can do. It's not only the CDA, but it's also the City Council and the Plan Commission. So we really looked at this as an opportunity to take a, a, a good look at what we're doing in the city and what we're not doing in the city um, within you know, some of the entities that are already in place with the uh, CDA and with the EDC and taking a look at what we're doing just in general with tourism. Um, plus, um, we, just, we just completed a downtown plan, which I think is very important. So we have a lot of things on our plate and uh, I had not met uh, Ms. Fish before. Pat, I've known for a long time. And by the way, Pat, heard a lot of really good things from folks up in Baraboo last week. Um, so congratulations on your work there. But we're very impressed, and we thought we'd bring something forward to the council so that, that we can get moving. There's a lot of interest in, in, interest in moving forward. So let's open it up for questions. Questions or comments? Mr. McGilvery? Thank you. I, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to say I'm particularly interested in the market analysis and the local resources review. I think... Uh, Th that particularly, from my point of view, is going to be very helpful in, in deciding whatever it is the pl plan that we would want to bring forward, just seeing where we have those gaps and understanding. Uh, that would certainly be helpful for me. I, I know we've talked about economic development and, and hiring someone to do that, but my issue, as I had said before, was, okay, where are we short? What are we telling these people to do? So I think if we can find a way to to uh, get that information compiled would be very helpful. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Mr. Linder? Uh, when you talk about the plan, are you talking about the city's development plans, the current downtown plan, or are you talking about your action plan? We would um, base a, an action plan on the information that we gathered here with you as a city council, a plan commission, and a CDA, and tailor it in conjunction with your comprehensive plan that you already have and the downtown plan that you have. 
Other questions, comments? Mr. Touche and then Ms. Ricky. Um, and this is more for staff. What other have, what other firms have we addressed or gotten proposals from? Mr. Burns? Yeah, at, at this point, we have not done a request for a proposal process or done interviews w with other firms. Um, following adoption of, of the budget, uh, we, we wanted to look at what some of the options were. And, and I think one of the items that we talked about is that there are, are a lot of individuals and a lot of firms out there that could do an economic development plan. Uh, but what we were looking for is someone who could not just um, do some of the planning stages, but really could get hands on and helping implement a plan. Um, I had reached out to, to Pat Cannon, who I, I've known for years and, and used to work for in the city of Sun Prairie. Um, I knew that he was is involved with uh, community development authorities in Baraboo and in Whitewater and, and actively doing economic development. And uh, Mr. Cannon put me in touch with, with Ms. Fish and that we had met with them and had, had gotten the proposal. Um, for, from my perspective, and I'll, I'll let the mayor and Adam uh, jump in if, if they'd like, but from, from our perspective, I think we felt like, like what was proposed here uh, was what we were looking for, um, not just uh, doing an economic development plan. We have several plans in place, but really kind of taking what we have, uh, doing the market analysis, putting together some action steps, and then working with us to implement them. So we thought we would bring it forward as, as an option for the council to consider. Uh, the way the proposal is structured, there's, there's two phases. So there would be initial phase one. If we decide after that that we'd like to do things on our own or open it up to an RFP process at that point for ongoing services, we could do that, uh, but it would allow us to get started. Um, certainly at this point, doing a full RFP process um, would be an option for the council, and I thought we could have that discussion as well tonight about how people would like to proceed. But we did want to at least bring this um, option and this proposal in front of the council for consideration. Ms. Ricky? Um, I was just wondering about uh, how, what your plan might include for encouraging small businesses to come to Verona, and if they do, help them stay long term. You take that. I have sure. some thoughts too, but go ahead. Uh, there's programs available. Um, one of the funds that I work with is called the Capital Catalyst Fund, which is uh, a, a new program through the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. It's uh, it's a unique opportunity because it's not. Uh, tied to job creation. It's more to help young startup businesses get going, small businesses, and that's what it's really there for. There's grant money involved with that, and then there's also different types of options for repayment of the loans. So that's what we found in Whitewater. We've spent $800,000 so far in the last year and a half to help young start businesses get started. So it's it, and it's limited. You can't use it for retail or hospitality, but it's for more technology-based and, and startup businesses. So you know, small businesses are are really the the key. You know, and it's kind of ironic because I always use the story. There's only one Epic out there. You happen to have it, um, but all the other communities are always looking for the Epic, and it it. it there's just not that many out there. But getting small businesses into your community is very important. I would like to add that I'm, I'm very excited about the opportunity to do that here because you do have the spin-off companies or all the entrepreneurs that need a place, an affordable place to start their business. And I've looked for office space and place to do business in the metro area and it's, it's prohib cost prohibitive in certain areas. You have certain assets, you have access to technology, you have so many things that you could offer a, a company. I think it would be a great opportunity to um, focus on that as a growth strategy for Verona. Other, Mr. Linder? Would, would there be any, in, either in the initial phase one or phase two, any recruitment of businesses to Verona? I think that would happen in phase two. Phase one would be identifying the opportunities for you to do that and, and kind of creating the strategy for the business recruitment, and then we would set up the community to do that in phase two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Leonard, go ahead. Uh, just a comment then. I, I guess part I'm very excited about is the, you know, getting the Community Development Authority and the Planning Commission and Council really understanding this a little bit better and uh, I'm you know, open-minded to learn more that we, we can do better. So I think that's, that's something that's really encouraging to me. Go ahead, Mr. And, Cannon. And, and follow up to your question. Um, if we did find a company who was interested, we would work to make sure that we did put them and land them. Yeah, you won't wait, well, you won't wait, wait 90 days? Or? No, okay. no. <laughs> okay. Actually, what we've tried to do in Whitewater is basically one-stop shopping, and basically my office serves as the ombudsman for anybody coming in, and basically the project's handed to me to carry forward, and we've been able to do projects rather quickly there to get things going. Go ahead, Mr. Linder. Can I follow up with that then, Mr. Cannon? Does, does, 
do you work like similar 40 hours per month with Whitewater or is it it's more or less or <laughs> <laughs> I work all the time uh, my contract is for no set time in Whitewater uh, I have a contract in in Baraboo where I perform 100 hours a month so I just about half time in both and then I work on weekends I work from home too and okay. do whatever I have to there's a lot of background stuff that needed to be done in both communities uh, Baraboo is a little bit different because we also have 110 housing units for uh, their HUD project which takes up a lot of time doing that part of it so that's kind of why I've had the the set number of hours there okay. thank you other questions mr. Diaz thank you um, my apologies if I misunderstood this earlier but uh, this is a question for mr. Burns so this this wasn't put out for an open bid what would have been the disadvantages of, of doing an open bid process mr. Burns yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that that is an option. I, I think the considerations um, were, first of all, time um, w w was an issue that we wanted to be able to bring something forward and get started. Uh, I know there's a lot of interest in moving this forward, so potentially starting with at least phase one uh, w would let us get it going rather than doing a longer RFP process. Uh, I, I think the second consideration is just that if, if we do an RFP process, uh, there may be a number of firms out there that can do an economic development plan, uh, but I don't know if there's as many firms or individuals that could provide the hands-on services. Not saying that there aren't others that are out there that do that, but um, that was one thing that we, that we talked about, that if we do an RFP, we would want to have some way to separate um, just economic development plans versus the type of services that are being proposed here. But certainly an, an RFP process um, would be an option. Uh, not saying that we, that we need to, to use this firm, but uh, we, we did get the proposal. I think our feeling is, is that we felt like this potentially was a good fit and um, wanted to bring it forward in case there was interest in getting started with, uh, with what they proposed for phase one. I think just in addition to what Bill said, and the initial meeting was Mr. Burns, Mr. Sarah, and I, and was one of those meetings where when uh, Kristen and, and Pat got done, it's like we all looked at each other and thought, this is almost too good to be true. And uh, did a little bit more background, a uh, tremendous amount of work that Kristen has done around the state. Um, and what we liked about Pat bringing to the table is Pat's very familiar with this area. So certainly we could have gone out uh, to do an RFP, but we thought that time is of essence as well. We have very qualified uh, individuals here and uh, we're not beholding to them with phase two. So. Uh, you know, we have an opportunity to see what they can do for us in phase one and if we like that and whatever the council decides for a process moving forward that's what we'll do but we really felt that time was of an essence and you know one of the things that we've heard from the public in the past is that we do these plans we do these studies and then nothing happens so we really want to keep the momentum going mr uh yours and then mr touche um I, I i do like the energy that you're kind of bringing um, to this whole uh, redevelopment, um, like the mayor said, we have had plan after plan after plan, especially for the downtown. Um, so that's an area I'd really like to see focus on. Um, but I, I do like the option that we are able to go out and do an RFP um, later on. But I, I do agree. I would like to see us jump on an opportunity, if we have it, to keep the momentum that the downtown plan has offered us. Thank you, Mr. Yours. Mr. Touche? Um, and this is my comments are for the council. You know, for me, it's we're talking eleven thousand dollars, and I feel like we're picking a contractor that has experience in this area. But I, I don't know the options. I don't know who else is out there. I mean, you made some really good points, Mr. Mayor, but um, for me, I would rather have it go to RFP from the beginning, and but be specific about local resources, local experience, and so on. All the items that you said that make, make um, uh, redevelopment resources ideal, but I don't know what else is out there. I, this, this isn't my expertise. To, I, this isn't what I do, so I just don't know. And having only one company come in front of me, I'm not comfortable moving ahead. Okay. Mr. Diaz and then Mr. Steiner. Thank you. I just want to say I, I plan on voting against this because I think it, it should have been an open bid process, um, but that's not a reflection on, on your obvious abilities or anything like that. I just feel like as a process, it's better to know what the options are um, and to have an open process because we're a, a governmental body and an open government is the best government. Mr. Steiner. Uh, thanks, Mayor. 
Uh, Mr. Burns, how does this uh, situation with these people work with Mr. Curtis and, and his work in, within the city? Mr. Burns? I, I think that uh, we would continue to, to work with the chamber as we currently do, um, and uh, that, that would be the same with the situation. Uh, I think as we've discussed this proposal, the thought was uh, doing an initial kickoff with uh, City Council, Plan Commission, uh, Community Development Authority. Definitely would like to get the Community Development Authority um, active and involved. Um, certainly chamber director and chamber that are interested uh, would be welcome to participate in that process. Um, and I think we would continue to coordinate with the chamber regardless of whether we work with this firm or, or work with other firms with economic development. Uh, but they would be working specifically for the city of Verona, um, not for the chamber. It, it would be uh, the city's contractor, I guess is what I would say. Mr. Uh, Steiner. A follow-up. Is that an overlap of, of situations between this group and, and Mr. Curtis's outfit? Because. I've heard them talk about CDAs also, and, and they're trying to get someone to lead that. And um, do we need both of them? Mr. Burns? I, I think there is a place for, for both. I think the Chamber of Commerce is focused primarily on uh, member businesses and supporting the businesses. And while they certainly have um, in involvement with economic development, the Community Development Authority would be uh, is a, a city committee um, uh, staffed by the city, and I think that they have a different uh, focus than the chamber, which is primarily focused on current members and servicing members, uh, versus going out and doing new business recruitment or business development. Um, I think there is uh, certainly some overlap and some coordination would be important, but I do think that there are separate functions for both. Mr. McIlvray. Oops, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple of comments. Uh, to the open government, I, I think this, this forum right here is about as open as it gets. We do have this on television. We're not doing anything. We're not picking somebody behind the scenes. Um, from my point of view, back in, at the finance level, and when we were doing going through the budget cycle, I had some serious reservations about spending money without clearly defining what it was we wanted to do. I think this first phase for and the amount that's listed here would clearly help us get much closer to defining what it is the city can do, what the city wants to do. I, I'd like you all to keep in mind that there are lots of times that we have budgetary items uh, and we give discretion to staff to pick different vendors to do the work. It, as an example, if a truck dra breaks down in the middle of winter, a softball truck, and it's a $10,000 item, Mr. Reader does not send out for an RFP. I'm, granted, this is a, a much bigger issue as far as what it could bring to the city, but again, the amount is, is similar. And we defined in our budget process that there was money that we were willing to expend on developing um, economic development in the city. And I, I think, I, I certainly appreciate, if we were talking about 150000 200 $2 million plan, I certainly can appreciate the, the necessity to have an RFP plan developed. But I, this, th this is a, a much different issue for me, and I, I hope you would reconsider. And I think this is very worthwhile. I think we could make a huge step forward in um, how we can get development going and attracting businesses to the city. One, one last thing, I, I think it would, an, another group that I'd like you to include in this possibly be the an ec Economic Development Commission. I think. They might be worthwhile. Yeah, we've talked know, about that. You know, in, including them, just they might have some ideas on that too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGilvery, and uh, appreciate your comments. I know that um, during the budget, and even when Bill and I and Adam were talking prior to the budget, it, it wasn't very clear exactly what we were going to do, and that came out pretty loud and clear in the budget process. And we really believe that phase one um, is going to help us in that process, and that's why we were excited after you know, we had the meeting with you and uh, put this out there as an option. So I would strongly encourage you to uh, support the phase one. Mr. Steiner? A uh, question for Pat. Um, in your work with Baraboo and, and Whitewater, do you work with their chamber director and, and their local CDA? And, and if so, how do you? I'm the executive director of the CDA, so I work directly with that group. Mm -hmm. I also work with the chamber. Uh, Baraboo's chamber is is more of a, a regional area. We also have what's called the Downtown Business uh, Association, DBI, 
uh, which is a very strong downtown group, and I work with that group also too. So I, I work with a, a lot of different groups uh, in the course of my operations. Have you met our chamber director? No, I have not. Yeah, you know, I, I just wonder how this is going to work. Um, Mr. Steiner, if I could, and, and per, perhaps this will help. The, um, the chamber does have a member. The Verona chamber does have a member on our CDA. They also have, or on the, on the EDC, and we work with them. But, Who is le that? but legally, the Chamber of Commerce cannot do a CDA on their own. Okay, am I I mean, correct, yep. uh, Pat? And I want to make sure, Pat and Kristen, that I'm saying that correctly. The Chamber, the Verona Chamber, or any Chamber, couldn't do a CDA on their own. They can be involved, they can have input, but they cannot do a CDA. As far as on the EDC, is that John Mr. Weiss. John Weiss? Mm -hmm. Is someone that was appointed in 2014. Mr. Steiner, any, any, or Ms. Fish? Would it be okay if I add Go some ahead, clarity? Go ahead. Um, chambers of Commerce and cities have various access to tools. Um, the city has access to TIF and other tools at their disposal that the chamber doesn't. So when you're recruiting businesses to a community, there's a place for everybody. A, a chamber, for example, in Wausau, the chamber in Wausau has McDevco, which is an economic development corporation. They have some loan funds available to them, but they don't have access to the tools that the city of Wausau has. So we all work together toward the same goal. We just have different purposes. Um, and every organization, every community has a different makeup of their economic development organization. It really is kind of a, a soup to nuts. You know, I've seen a variety of, of models um, I think what the city is trying to do right now is is provide some proactivity and some intention to the effort. And by all means, we'll definitely work with the chamber to the extent that it's practical. Mr. Steiner? And Ms. Fish, would your group work with, there's, there's a big development going on with Barona Road right now, and there's a whole host of businesses along that corridor that are very, very worried about their survival, and, and and maybe Pat, you can chime in on this. How, how would your outfit work with those extended businesses that are just on the edge of our city, but are very much recruiting people in our city to become active because they're worried? Sure. Um, the number one tool that communities have to grow their their ec the economy is business retention and expansion of local businesses. Of what you have here now, to take the care and feeding of your local companies isn't your number one priority as far as economic development is concerned. More jobs are created, more investment is created from what you already have here. So we definitely would want to pay attention to every single one of those companies and make sure they were healthy and viable and had tools for gap financing or working capital if they needed it to every, every extent possible. And then we look at the gaps that we'll discover hopefully in our phase one and be able to recruit businesses that make sense to help the existing businesses be successful as well as to fill a need in the community for retail or commercial or other, other uses that aren't here already. I think you have to look at it as economic development doesn't necessarily end at, the, at your corporate limits that you really have to make sure that you, you bring other communities and, and other businesses outside <coughs> of your community into your discussion and into your analysis work. Um, it, it, it's just part of the operation is, is understanding. It, it, it's more of a global economy and it's getting bigger every day through you know, technology that, that people are now doing more things over the internet and those type of things that you really have to look at that. And to follow up on Christian's point was 80% uh, of the new jobs created come from existing businesses. Uh, they don't come from new businesses that you're gonna be able to bring in and bring in 200 employees, but you might find 10 businesses here are gonna bring in 20 employees each. So that's where the, the new jobs come from in, uh, by a vast majority. So helping those existing businesses is paramount to your success. Mr. Steiner? I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, but have you looked at our downtown? Have you seen how we're landlocked and, and uh, you know, we're really dealing with some issues that were developed 50 years ago by the people who sat at this table. And, and we have struggled with this. I've been around here for a few years now, and I've not seen much improvement. And here we go again, hiring some people like yourselves to come in. What do you hope to accomplish? Have you seen our downtown? 
Yeah, I've been through the downtown. What's your opinion? Uh, it's like most downtowns and most communities. You know, things grow on the outside, and the downtowns are the ones that suffered. I worked in Sun Prairie, and when I was started there, there was the bank and the city hall, and it wasn't until the city started to become very proactive in redeveloping that downtown area that we were able to go from, what, 80 dwelling units to over 800 dwelling units in a matter of five years. We revitalized the entire downtown and did a lot of things to bring people down to make it, make it a, a destination point rather than uh, you're just driving through and I'll stop at City Hall if I have business there. I can do my branch banking anywhere. But that was all that was downtown, that and some local establishments. But there was no reason to come downtown until the city stepped up and brought in uh, a development. We, re we redid the entire downtown area, and it just kind of snowballed from there. And we went from one block to the next, cleaning them up until the whole downtown area has now become very vital and, and very vibrant downtown. It used to be I could look out my window, and if you saw somebody on a sidewalk, it was like, whoa, now it's, there's a park across the street and it's always full. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do, but a lot of it is getting the businesses united, working together and, and bringing forth a leader within that group or leaders and having them do some things together. Baraboo's a fine example. They, they do so much cross promotion between themselves that there's always something going on with their downtown, um, just through different ideas that they, they bring together as a group because they realize that your business, your business, and your business all benefit from my business growing. Mr. Steiner? You're stepping into a situation, if you are approved here, we, we have that already. We have a group of businesses in our downtown that are tight, and they have been working extremely hard to try and improve their situation. We, we brought in apartments to our downtown, uh, there's a couple developments that have happened over the past few years. We have a, a path going through our downtown. But you know the problem we have is we have two major highways going through our downtown. And one of them carries about 9,000 cars each way in the morning and at night. And the other one we got lucky and moved to the south side of town. So, but, so Verona Road now is actually doable. But you know what we do? We give away land to, to nonprofits. So you're dealing with some issues here. I, I, I wish you the best of luck. I'm not going to vote for this, though. But if you do get approved, I, I hear, dearly hope you can do something. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Mr. Yeah, again, I just want to reiterate, I want to be able to capitalize on the enthusiasm and the energy we have. Um, but going to the open um, government argument, I, which I am somewhat sympathetic towards, I, I would like to see a decision like this go to a committee level first um, in the future. Um, like this could have easily gone to the plan commission a week ago, which would have given us more time and more information, um, or, or the finance committee, um, something of that nature, um, which may have helped some of this argument tonight. But again, I, I will go through with phase one and vote for phase one because I do think it is important <coughs> that we keep our downtown moving and um, even other parts of the city as well, not just the downtown, but I think that's an area we really need to focus on. Thank you. Ms. Doyle? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to say that I, I'm very happy at what I've heard tonight and think that this is um, kind of stemming from the conversations that we had during the budget discussions last year and that when we saw this item and looking for an economic development coordinator or some type of consultant, is we realized how important it was to have a plan in place and to make sure that there was a knowledgeable <coughs> firm or individual who had experience and was really well versed in this type of work. And I think, again, based on what I've heard tonight and the efforts that staff and the mayor have put into this, that I've seen that and think that this could be a great um, partnership moving forward and something to really help the city empower itself to continue to improve the economic development in our city. So thank you tonight for your time. Thank you. Other questions or comments? No questions or comments. We have no motion before us at this point. Are there any potential motions? Yes, I would. Mr. McGillray? Yes, uh, at this time I would like to make a motion to engage um, the redevelopment resources um, 
to provide economic development services uh, to include phase one as outlined tonight in the amount I have to get to that page Mr. Burns do you have that amount? 11,025 in the amount of eleven thousand dollars and twenty five cents nope eleven thousand oh, twenty five dollars sorry we have a motion by Mr. McGilvery is there a second 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 by Ms. Doyle questions or comments on the motion can I ask for a roll call vote please a roll call vote has been requested. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Schofield, would you read the roll, please? Alderperson Steiner? Nay. Alderperson Touche? No. Alderperson Yours? Aye. Alderperson Diaz? No. Alderperson Doyle? Aye. Alderperson Linder? Aye. Alderperson McGilvery? Aye. And Alderperson Rieke? Aye. And that motion passes on a five to three vote. So Ms. Fish and Mr. Cannon, we look forward to you um, having communications real soon with Mr. Burns and Mr. Sayre, and we will proceed. Thank you, Thank you very much for being here this evening as well. We are now on agenda item 10-3, which is discussion and possible action regarding proposed bio um, biopharmaceutical facility and technology park uh, and tax increment financing district number six. So Mr. Burns, would you provide some background please? Yes, uh, United Vaccines is a leading manufacturer in the field of animal vaccinations. Uh, they currently operate a facility in the city of Fitchburg and are seeking to expand and uh, looking at a site uh, located within Verona Technology Park. Uh, we do have uh, Rebecca Kearns from United Vaccines and some additional staff that are here this evening. Uh, they'd like to present an overview about the firm, uh, about their uh, potential plans for expansion, what they're looking at for the city of Verona. Uh, they also are seeking uh, an economic development incentive through the Tax Incremental Financing District to help facilitate this project. Uh, we do have the agenda notice to have the ability to go into closed session to discuss the request for an economic development incentive. Uh, we're not anticipating any formal action this evening, but wanted to provide an opportunity to, to learn more about the project. And then uh, as we go into closed session, the opportunity for the council to provide feedback on the requested incentive. If you would, please, uh, for our benefit and also for those watching at home, if you would identify yourself, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Rebecca Kearns, and I am the Managing Director at United Vaccines. My name is Mike Green. I'm uh, with the GFS Resource Group, uh, providing uh, project um, management as far as uh, development for United Vaccines. Um, so to begin, to provide a little bit of background on United Vaccines, as, a bit, as has been mentioned, we are a uh, biopharmaceutical um, manufacturer for the veterinary industry. So we, we provide vaccines for niche markets within the veterinary industry. United Vaccines has been in business for more than 50 years. We've always been here in Wisconsin, we've always been a subsidiary of a larger company. Uh, our most current organization started in 2006, and we're now operating as an independent corporation. Uh, and when we came into fit the Fitchburg location in 2006 um, as this independent corporation, we were intending on a business that looked like something like $9 million a year in annual sales revenue and about 20 to 25 employees. In the years since, what we've ended up uh, realizing is annual revenue is closer to 20 million and um, we'll end up having closer to 65 to 70 employees. So when we went into the facility in Fitchburg and we built it up and we created our production facility, um, it was built for the much smaller level of manufacture. We've now outgrown that facility. We've added another uh, 12,000 square feet to that facility in, in 2012, and we've now outgrown that expansion. So we've gotten to the point now where we simply need to build from scratch in a greenfield space somewhere and provide ourselves with the space that we need for what we're doing right now and the opportunity to grow in the future. 
One of the things that has also come our direction in the last several years are opportunities for contract manufacturing. I'm contacted at least once or twice a year with requests to do specific projects, whether it's for uh, university researchers, whether it's for other veterinary vaccine manufacturers who don't have the capacity and things like this. And every single one we've had to turn down because we just don't have the capacity within our current facility. So what we have in front of us right now for a project is a, a $25 million project budget. We're looking to build a, about a 59,000 square foot manufacturing facility um, that will include manufacturing, warehouse, laboratory space, and administrative space. We really need to move forward with this construction because as I mentioned, we've literally outgrown our facility. We're, um, we're, we're building another five office spaces within our warehouse right now just to house new employees that we have coming in within the next three months. Um, we are a GMP, a CGMP or European GMP, which means Good Manufacturing Practices, registered facility. We're also registered with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, these registrations mean that this is a very specialized facility. It's something that is unlike most other facilities that are built for manufacturing in the area. We currently have 52 employees and we're looking at creating another 23 jobs as we move forward within the next three years. Um, we have we have WEDEC support for um, this under this job creation or for this job creation. And our primary objective, as I mentioned, is to bring our main, our primary product, our vaccine products to the market. But obviously the opportunity for growth is there and we want to take on those opportunities for contract manufacture if they come our way. Um, to talk a little bit about the project timing and status, I'm going to let Mike jump in here. As far as project timing, January 29th, we signed an offer to purchase with a couple contingencies. Things are moving. We're doing our 60-day uh, due diligence and um, soil work, those types of things, trying to understand what's happening on the site. Um, we're expecting to have deliverables out through the approval process in two different phases. Um, when you start hearing about some of the timing that we're trying to get into, uh, you'll understand why we're splitting this up. So we're looking at um, uh, basically the foundation site environmentals somewhere um, uh, coming out in mid-March, looking to go through uh, the planning and approval process with a target here in May, um, early May to, for groundbreaking. The second phase dealing with the um, health welfare, the, the rest of the building because of the calculations and the review process from CDC as well as the, the European Union um, looking at this, we're expecting those um, drawings to be out uh, somewhere approaching mid-June to be able to move this project forward. The goal is to have the envelope done completely enclosed before winter comes because it's not nice to do stuff in the wintertime. <laughs> Um, we're looking at a construction completion timeline somewhere around second quarter of 2016 and a commissioning and validation running from there on. This is a very complicated facility. It is a long process to be able to turn these facilities on. So you have commissioning and then validation or classification of this facility. We're expecting will take anywhere between three and six months. All the manufacturing processes are documented, so things happen very slowly as we're looking at transitioning from one facility to another. Um, the, um, the, the process is this, uh, UV is prepared, um, well, the number one priority is vaccine production. So during 2016, they're gonna need to run two facilities at the same time, because the primary objective is there's no nobody else that is making these vaccines out, so they need to keep that first and foremost. Um, so what we're expecting is by fourth quarter of 2016, the facility will be validated and then the production will be phasing down in the Fitchburg facility, st ramping up into, uh, into the Verona facility here. Um, the production process is very lengthy. By the time you start something, you, we're talking about 46 days, um, plus all the testing, plus all the testing in Europe to be able to get to a sellable product. And so things are, um, 
it's a long startup schedule when it comes in. Going back to the offer to purchase, there's two contingencies that last me on the uh, 60 days. One is financing. We do have um, two banks involved with term sheets coming out. That doesn't seem to be it's going to be any issues with that. And um, also the development agreement, which uh, we've been chatting with uh, staff on. Um, and with that, we'll, we'll let you. Uh, and so, so what we're here asking um, for you to help us with this evening is is with with this facility being in a TIF district, um, and as I explained, we'll be operating two facilities concurrently for at least probably six months. Um, and so the opportunity to have a, a cash grant out of the TIF in order to assist us with um, operating capital during those months where we'll be operating both facilities at once uh, is something that would be extremely helpful to us. Um, we not only for, from the standpoint of operating capital, but also because we have um, financing, financing contingencies with, um, with um, EBIT to total debt ratios that we have to be able to maintain. So um, we're asking for $700,000 in cash grants from the TIF, payable in quarter four of 2015, because that's when we believe we're going to be fully um, leveraged as far as, as uh, the financing goes. And the security behind that is the building itself. As we all know that the uh, different valuations, and, and that's what we're doing right now on the financing side, is that uh, there's a manufacturing valuation and then there's a for sale valuation. And being a uh, um, specialized facility as it is, it's going to be, uh, um, there is going to be a difference, let's just put it that way, between the two. Uh, so the security would be in, in the facility itself. Um, the other key part of this particular business to understand why, and you've, you have five-year projections and financials that are there, is that the revenue stream is cyclic. 90% um, of the revenue comes in between March and June, with 10% coming in in October. So you manufacture year-round to be able to sell in those burst uh, first uh, sales months, and that's based around the vaccination in, in the uh, uh, animals that uh, UV is producing the vaccine for the vaccination cycle itself. So that's also showing there in the financials. Thank you, Ms. Kearns and Mr. Green. If there are questions from the council that are not specific to the specifics of the, of the financial request, we would take those now. Mr. Touche. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so you talked about growth and how you'd outgrown your existing facility in Fishburg. Um, how long do you anticipate being able to stay in Verona? Do you have options for more space in uh, the business park? We are currently, the, the option to purchase is for a six acre plot and we've actually um, planned that based on the current 59,000 square foot facility um, plus another 30,000 square foot addition. Um, and so the, the plan that we have laid out with, um, the, with the architectural and engineering firm um, actually shows, is, is, is actually showing what we're going to be building now, um, plus you know, the, the addition and additional parking. So we're, we're structuring the facility on the land with the, with the expectation of the potential for an additional 30,000 square foot um, growth within the next, I would say, 10 years. And to put that in perspective, that's a doubling of the manufacturing cell. So the current manufacturing cell in this proposal is about 25,000 square feet with another 30,000 capable of bringing onto the site. Mr. Touche? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, Mr. Yours? Just a quick question. How much larger is <coughs> your first one, this 59,000 square foot building, than your current location? Our current location is about 30,000 square feet. So we're, we're doubling. Um, and frankly, um, we, we could be going larger now if it were within the budget. Um, we're the 69 or the 59,000 square feet that we have planned currently is is strictly limited by our 
by our $25 million budget. Um, it would probably be, I would say maybe 10,000 to 15,000 square feet bigger if we had the budget for it. Other questions or comments at this point? Mr. McIlbright? The $25 million, uh, does that include? Mac? Sorry, the $25 million includes the cost of the land, I'm assuming. Yes. yes. So, right. Roughly, we're looking at somewhere around a $400 square foot building. Yes. It's a, for the benefit of everybody else, that's a pretty high end building. Um, I don't know what you're putting in there, but that's <laughs> quite a bit. It's uh, a lot of it is in is in the HVAC system. It's because these rooms are extremely clean. So you have laboratory spaces where you're working and you're manufacturing things and the air that's in the room has zero particles. So I mean, you're talking about air turnover I mean hundreds more times per um you know, a couple hours than there is in this room, for example. Mr. McIlvery? Yeah, I think. The other part to understand is that, again, this is European regulated facility. And uh, you have the narratives looking at the business model and understand the market shares. Um, in Europe, there's no distinction between human and animal. And there is a distinction here in the United States. Um, that's also driving some of that square foot cost. So to find comparable you would have to look at um, a human vaccine manufacturer uh, and understand all the requirements for that. So um, that's one of the unique parts of this facility. Mr. McIlvery? And, and the reason I was asking was just to, so that you could understand that it's a pretty high valuation for the, the building on that piece of property, for sure. Um, I had a couple follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the CDC. I'm, I'm assuming you must have some kind of guidelines. I know that people who have if people listen to that and they hear CDC, people are going to be a little bit concerned. So if you could speak a little bit to the requirements for um, uh, testing that the CDC must do quarterly, or I, I don't know how often it's done. Um, so the, the CDC comes in and inspects us. We have a registration with the CDC, and um, they come in and inspect us minimally every three years, but typically they will come in unannounced within that three-year period. Um, we are also, we also have reporting requirements, so anytime there is an incident or even an inventory discrepancy, even if it's a typo on a piece of paper, we're, we're required to notify the CDC and you can give them a full report. So there are, there are very specific um, regulatory guidelines that we have to follow in order to remain a registered facility. If we don't maintain our registration, then we can't do our business. So um, the, the, the materials that we're working with are materials that we've that we've been working with for the last 50 years. So there's something there are things we're very familiar with, um, and uh, you know we we have very good procedures in place, and we're in compliance with all of the regulations that the CDC puts out. Okay. And Go ahead, Mr. And one other thing, when we, when we talk about expending TIF funds. Um, one of the things we try to do is create value, and also we're trying to attract good paying jobs. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you're at liberty to discuss, I mean, you're talking about bringing, you know, a significant amount of jobs and new jobs to, to our community. Could you speak to the, the level of, the, of those jobs? So um, the, I, I would say uh, half of the jobs that we're talking about are probably at the, um, the, the entry level. So in that if, I mean, if you want specific dollar amounts, they're about $17 an hour. Um, and we, we have um, very specific growth opportunities within the company for people who start at, a, at, a, um, at the entry level. They have opportunities to grow up to four different times within the next, I think, four to five years. Right. Um, and, and then we also have some uh, mid-level management and senior management positions that we're going to be adding as well. Thank you. Mr. Touche. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, back to your $25 million. Does that include the equipment in the building or is that purely the building? That includes uh, a one significant piece of equipment, which is worth $3 million. Um, and then, and it, and it includes 
utilities and that kind of equipment, boilers, things like that. Um, the, the rest of the equipment is, is, is either going to be, um, is, is, yeah, I guess it, it, it's in there. No, I'm just trying to, to get a get better sense of what's the property tax value of the facility, not necessarily the equipment in the facility. So it's not really 25 million, it's somewhere closer to 20 million. It sounds more realistic, is that Right, fair? it's actually probably, I would, to be honest, I think it's closer to 17 because we have a, we have a $3 million contingency in there. Um, and then we have the $3 million piece of equipment. So I think it's actually, or 19, I think. Okay. Yeah, and, and one of the things as we look at manufacturing credit are um, currently now the experience in UVs, things like uh, the autoclaves and laminar flow hoods and things that are normally in other businesses would be considered equipment and exempt, they are not. Um, they're part of the tax roll in Fitchburg right now. And so why the lyophilizer, the big $3 million piece of equipment is clearly exempt. Um, there isn't that much extra in there that's gonna be excluded from, from a manufacturing valuation. Mr. Burns, you had a comment? Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to comment for the council that when we do go into closed session, uh, we'll have the ability to talk about some of the valuation assumptions and how that could relate to a potential development agreement for the TIF, uh, uh, the TIF request. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Mr. Touche? I still have a couple more questions, thank you. Um, Will there be a vivarium on the facility? Yes. And um, what, do you, will you be, what are you planning to do with the old facility? Um, I'm, I'm probably going to sell it. Thank you. Other questions for the open session? Mr. Linder? I just got one. Um, Without the money, would you be coming to Verona? Um, you know, we we talked about a lot of different options um, when we were looking at at where we wanted to move the facility, and frankly, one of the reasons why Verona was very um, favorable for us is we we did a census of all of our employees and we looked at where they were coming from, and this is a nice central location. The other part of it, and, and this is something, this is a conversation that I had to have with our, the president of the company, he's from Europe, and he looks at areas in a different way. Um, you know, he wanted this, us to, um, to, to build in the middle of a city, a middle of a, like, a built up city, a business park that was already built up. And for me, um, I think it's a lot more exciting to be in a place that's in its growing stage rather than coming in at the end. So for me, coming in in this business park, it's relatively green right now, but there's a lot of opportunities coming. And in the next five years, that area is going to be all shiny and new and exciting and, and growing. And that's a place where we wanna be. Um, we have a lot of younger employees. They're going to be excited by that um, and you know this so this is for for me um this is an ideal setting for for where i want our our, our business to be i just want to make sure that we're asking questions that um, we should be asking in open session not in closed session when we're when we're having a little bit more discussion and, and negotiations but Maybe that's, that's that wasn't okay or <laughs> i just said i want to make sure <laughs> mr linder well i, I just I mean, I, I appreciate you said a lot of good things. I guess I just didn't hear an answer is all. The big, the big uh, um, so issue that we've got here not, is in the covenants and the financing and the calculations. If that is not met, the project could be delayed two years. And the risk for UV then is there, are, uh, with the growth they've already had in the facility, um, it's going to be continually harder as regulatory tightens up for them to maintain uh, the manufacturing process there in a fashion. There's just, um, you know, when you look at growing a, uh, a production facility by 400% in three and a half years, you can imagine there's a few growing pains. And that's really what needs to be done to be able to help uh, cement the, the vaccine supply.
other questions, comments for the open session? Not seeing any, I would then accept the motion to go into closed session. If someone is interested in making that motion, if they would read the actual language. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. McGilray. Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to go into closed session. Uh, Common Council may convene in closed session as authorized by section 19-85, parent 1, parent E of the Wisconsin statute for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. The Co Common Council may reconvene an open session to take action on closed session item. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Linder. Uh, this motion requires a roll call vote. Ms. Schofield, if you would, please. Oh, sorry. We're, we'll do that as soon as we take action on this one. Okay, thank you, though. Ms. Schofield, if you would, please. Alderperson Touche? Aye. Alderperson Yers? Aye. Alderperson Diaz? No. Alderperson Doyle? Aye. Alderperson Linder? Aye. Alderperson McGilvery? Aye. Alderperson Rieke? No. And Alderperson Steiner? Aye. And that motion passes 6-2. Um, I would also accept a motion for the next agenda item. Under item 10-4, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll make a motion to go into closed session for discussion on potential purchase of property at 101 North Main Street. Uh, Common Council again may convene in closed session as authorized by section 19-85, parent 1, parent E of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the pur purchase of public properties whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. The Common Council may reconvene an open session and take action on the closed session item. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Touche. This also requires a roll call vote. Ms. Schofield, if you would, please. Alderperson Yers? Aye. Alderperson Diaz? No. Alderperson Doyle? Aye. Alderperson Linder? Aye. Alderperson McGilvery? Aye. Alderperson Rieke? No. Alderperson Steiner? Aye. Alderperson Touche? Aye. And that motion passes as well. We are in closed session.
We are on agenda item number 11, which is announcements. Are there any announcements this evening? Mr. Steiner. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The Verona Area Community Theater is 75% to their goal of raising $2 million for this building project. And to accomplish this 25% uh, money, they're getting some local businesses involved. And on the 12th, 17th, and 20th, they're going to be encouraging people in the city to go and eat at some of these Verona restaurants. If you want to see the details, it's in the Verona Press last week's issue, and that's the first week in February. And uh, please, they're almost there. They are so fired up and and if they can meet this two million dollars that really says a good thing to this board that these people are serious and uh, you know for what we're doing for them and what they're doing for the city it's working and I'm very very happy for these people thank you thank you mr. Steiner any other announcements mr. years Yep, I uh, just wanted to thank the Country View Elementary School second graders for coming to City Hall and visiting with us for a little while and uh, touring and meeting some of our public safety officials. And I promised them that I'd, I'd mention that in our next council meeting. Thank you, Dale. Other announcements? If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. We have a motion by Mr. Touche. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Diaz. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Well, you want these back?